have a partial solar eclipse happening on the morning of Thursday, June 10th, 2021, and I'm going to tell you all about it. Now, it is a partial eclipse. That means that the sun, here's the sun, will not be completely covered by the moon like it was in August 2017. You probably remember that. So nobody gets to see the total eclipse, but many of us will get to see a partial eclipse, even a very deep partial eclipse, depending on where you're located. And this will be happening at sunrise for viewers in the northeastern United States and in eastern Canada. It's very unusual. It'll be very unusual to see, and it will also be an interesting challenge for photographers. Now, an important safety note, as I'm sure you know, it's dangerous to look directly at the sun. That's true on any normal day of the year, and it's also true during a partial eclipse. So you'll want eclipse glasses that look something like this or like this. Make sure you've got the kind that were made by a reputable company, approved for looking at the sun. If you're not sure, so maybe you saved yours from 2017, that's great. If you have some extra ones lying around, if you want to buy them uh, online, that's fine. Make sure you get them from a reputable manufacturer. If you're not sure where to go, there's a list of reputable manufacturers on the website of the American Astronomical Society. So that's a good place to start if you're not sure. Also, you might want to pay a visit to, the, to your local science center or planetarium, or even to the astronomy department at your local university. You never know, they might even have some spare ones that they're just giving away. All right, let's look at the details of this very interesting eclipse. During this eclipse, the moon will be near the farthest point from Earth in its orbit, and that means it will be too small in the sky to completely block the sun. And what that means is that people who are in the exact right spot will see a so-called annular eclipse, sometimes called a ring of fire, where the moon blocks out the central part of the sun, but you can still see a, a kind of a, a donut or a ring of sunlight. Now, the path of annularity, that is the path where people can actually see this ring of fire, only encompasses very sparsely populated areas. Starting in northern Ontario, the path moves up over Hudson Bay and then Baffin Island and the Canadian Arctic over the North Pole and into eastern Siberia. So, as I say, that is a fairly sparsely populated area. But in contrast, tens of millions of people live in the area where the partial eclipse will be visible, and in particular, people observing from a line stretching roughly from Toronto to New York City will see the sun maximally eclipsed as it rises. So everyone in that area gets to see the rising sun partially eclipsed, which is very cool. But if you happen to be on that line between Toronto and New York, it's actually close to maximum eclipse shortly after sunrise. So that's, that's pretty rare and kind of cool. Now, let's talk about photography. If you're just using your smartphone, I mean, you're welcome to give it a try. You probably won't see very much because neither the sun nor the moon is very large in the sky. You might think they are, but they're not. They, they're tiny. They extend about half of one degree. So you might be tempted to get out your DSLR, maybe with a telephoto lens. Okay. But again, some, some important safety considerations. Um, if you have a DSLR, you're, you're literally looking through the optical system when you look through the viewfinder. In other words, don't aim it at the sun and then look through the viewfinder. Don't do that, you'll damage your eyes. Again, don't aim this at the sun and then look through it. But if you're able to look at the image on an LCD screen, you're basically fine. You're not going to damage your eyes by looking at the display on a screen like this. Uh, however, you still might want to exercise caution because if you leave your camera with a telephoto lens aimed at the sun for any length of time, you might damage uh, the sensor in your camera and you don't want to do that. So please be careful. But there is another element to this, which is that because the eclipse is happening right at sunrise, as you know, if you're looking at the sun at sunrise or at sunset, you're actually looking through a very thick layer of the Earth's atmosphere, which can dim the sun's light quite a bit. And that means you can probably glimpse the sun, as long as you don't stare at it, definitely don't stare, but you can probably actually have a very quick look at the sun, as long as it's right on the horizon, and you'll probably be okay. 
But again, safety first, definitely don't risk your eyes. You don't want to do that. So absolutely have those eclipse glasses handy. And for photographers, this really is a wonderful chance to catch a very unusual sight, namely the sun just as it rises in a state of being partially eclipsed. So if you're really lucky, you might be able to snag a shot something like this. And now I'm just going to run through some times for specific cities in the U.S. Northeast and in Eastern Canada. Of course, you can get more detailed times and uh, figures for more cities on the internet, and I have some useful websites listed at the end of this video. In Washington, D.C., the sun rises at 5.42 a.m. Maximum eclipse is just a few minutes later at 5.45. The sun will be just a bit less than 60% obscured, and then the partial eclipse ends about a little bit less than an hour later at 6.29. Moving on to New York City, sun rises 5.24 a.m. Maximum eclipse a few minutes later at 5.33. The sun will be 73% obscured, or a little bit less than three quarters, so that should be quite a sight. And the partial eclipse will end at 631. Again, do not over, do not sleep in, or you're going to miss all the fun. And again, a clear view to the northeast is very important, but think how many high-rise apartments there are in Manhattan. If you are lucky enough to live anywhere in one of these buildings, as we look across the river from, from Queens, you are in for quite a treat. And if you don't live there, well, maybe you can get to, I don't know, Central Park or the ocean, um, if you're really lucky, uh, to get that view. From Boston. Now, Boston being further to the northeast, uh, maximum eclipse doesn't come until the sun has been up for a longer period of time. So we have sunrise at 5.07, maximum eclipse at 5.33, covering the moon covering a little bit less than three quarters of the sun's disk with the partial eclipse ending at 6.33. Turning to Buffalo, we have the sun rising at 5.36, maximum eclipse just a few minutes later at 5.39, with the sun almost 80% obscured, and the partial eclipse ending at 6.36. Now just across the border in Canada, in Toronto, we have the sun rising at 5.35, maximum eclipse a few minutes later at 5.40, and the sun will be 80% obscured by the moon, with the partial eclipse ending at 6.38. A little further east, in Montreal, we've got the sun rising at 5.05, maximum eclipse uh, about half an hour later at 5.39. Uh, the sun uh, will be almost 80% obscured by the moon, partial eclipse ending at 6.39. Again, no matter where you are in this area, uh, it's a very early morning event. And finally, we turn to Halifax, now we're in Atlantic time, shifting over from Eastern time to Atlantic time. The sun rises at 5.28 a.m. The partial eclipse doesn't even begin until the sun has been up for a few minutes. So we have the partial eclipse beginning at 5.36, with maximum eclipse happening at 6.33, when the sun will be 70% covered by the moon. And then just a bit more than an hour after that, at 7.35, the partial eclipse ends. So there you have it. Now you know everything you need to know about this unusual and interesting astronomical event happening on the morning of Thursday, June 10th. I hope the weather's clear. Uh, I know it's early in the morning. I don't like to get up early. I'm going to check the weather forecast the night before. But if it is clear, I will be up to see it. I hope you'll have a chance to see it also. Again, uh, exercise caution. Don't look directly at the sun uh, for any length of time. I can't stress that enough. But it will be a very interesting, unusual event that you'll remember for a long time. So good luck to all of us on June the 10th.